What's up? What's up? What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Rogue Hero here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 of the best cars to pick up in Battle of Legends Armageddon. So the reason why I want to make this video is because, let's face the fact, there's not really too much going on in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community that is. But we still are getting um, a lot of sets coming out. Konami got to pump out that money and make that money. And for what it's worth, why I will always tell you guys, I don't think it's a good idea to invest into the format right now if you're playing competitively due to the fact that a lot of these decks, unless you're playing on a local level, if your state allows that because of the situation we're in and around the world, you may or may not get to enjoy the cards you're investing your money in. But Battle of Legends, Armageddon is very different. They have a bunch of money cards in this set. And for you guys that are like to make money out there, this is definitely a set for you. So with all that being said, Let's get into it. Without further ado, let's begin. Ice on my wrist, looking kinda cool. Bad bitch with me, she ain't tryna move. Niggas staring at me, what you tryna do? Got me looking at my watch, and it's time to do. Starting off by saying, before we get to the actual video, please smash that like button. Let's get this video to at least 100 likes, that'd be awesome. YouTube ain't supporting your boy like my last two videos got under a thousand views, which is typically unheard of on this channel. However, it's a new era, and if you guys rock with me, I'd really appreciate it if you guys would help me out by at least smashing the like button. And of course, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more. Number 10, Fusion Fossil Support. I think I said it backwards, Fossil Fusion Support. So that's more of like a newer archetype coming out in the set. Um, they pretty much work based off the Fossil Fusion card, which allows you to bring out their Fusion monsters by using monsters in any player's graveyard. Most of the Fossil cards re require rock monsters to use it based on doing my research. And they have one of their boss monsters that allows you to attack twice. So based on what I've seen in the videos I've watched that I can remember that is, it's pretty much like a fast, speedy, OTK heavy deck. Um, I, I don't know how competitive it's going to be. I haven't really seen decks in the OCG utilize it. But with that being said, I think um, as new support, that's really solid. You guys should definitely look into picking it up. Number nine, Fire Lady Flint. Now, this card, when it first got released, everybody in the hero community fan page went nuts. Except me, because I saw the card, my yeah, it's okay. Level 1 is the Iso Day target for you guys that like to play Hero Iso Day or Iso Day decks in general. It's really good. And then I think, I believe when you have a warrior in your hand, you can banish it and spend some level 4 lower warrior for man. I think it's an okay card. Um, it's really hyped, which is why I say it's good to pick it up. I personally think it doesn't have a place in the Hero Day because the Hero Deck is Kenny. It's kind of tight with the deck space, but. If you're playing more of a fun deck and a deck that's more combo orientated, it's definitely a card for you to pick up. Um, number eight. Now, this is some big money right here. And um, I'm going to go ahead hit the Numeron support. Um, that stuff is going to be really big. A lot of it's of high rarity. Um, it's going to be using the Eldish deck. It's going to be like, using a lot of different stuff to go after. So with that being said... I think coming in at number eight, that's, that support is really going to be good as well. Speaking of Numeron and stuff like that, also, I'm going to pair this in together. This is just a big money card. Um, the Utopia Astro Rare. Now, I had to look this up because I didn't. Before I even researched this, I didn't know what the heck an Astro Rare is. Apparently, it's from like the TV show. It's like a different language that's not real. For my Cleons, I'm not my Cleons, what am I saying? For my bird people out there from Star Trek. You guys already know what that means, but um, on a serious note, um, it's a big money card, collector edition. For people who are fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, definitely going to pick up the Astro Rare. Depending on how Konami short prints it, easy $1,000 card, easy. So yeah, all that um, Zexel, Numeron, slash Utopia stuff, pick it up. It's going to be big money. Um, I even believe some of the Numeron support sees play with the Eldritch deck from what I was reading online. So yeah, man, look into that stuff if you guys want to make a quick buck. Number seven. Thousand dragon, ten thousand dragon. Now, honestly, in my opinion, this is probably the best card you can pick up out of the set. Apparently, it's a card that's supposed to represent um, us hitting ten thousand dragon cards in Yu-Gi-Oh or something like that. So they may they want to make the ten thousand dragon card. And honestly, it's supposed to be like a the new rarity, similar to like the Astro Rare. 
I literally looked this up online on TCG Player. It was going for fifteen hundred dollars, bro. Fifteen. I literally just want to buy a box just to try to pull this card. G, like, if you guys pull this card, you can go buy yourself a clapped out Honda Civic. If you guys pull this card, you guys can go buy a rusted out Toyota Corolla. Like, literally, the card is worth fifteen hundred bucks. Like, that's stripper money. Like. <laughs> It's only fans money. You guys know how you guys be tricking off in clubs. But all seriousness though, honestly, the card collector's item, um, more than likely it's probably gonna be like one per case if I was to take a wild guess. So have fun pulling that. And that's the pre-order price. Unless it's overly printed, which I doubt it. Man. Money, 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 money. That's all I can say about that one. Money. Um, and, and these cards are not in any order, honestly. One is not better than 10, 10 is not better than one. I mean, obviously, certain cards are better when it comes to money wise. You guys already know, I just make my top 10s off the top of my head. I don't put them in any specific order. So take every order, take the order with a grain of salt. I'm just reading you guys off the list. I believe we're on number six, Cross Sheep. That's just a solid reprint, honestly. Cross Sheep, um, when it first came out, it was short printed. I remember opening up the um, boxes that they came out in. I forgot the name of the box. Don't ask me. I think I pulled one out of a box. So, yeah, that card is definitely short printed. We definitely need um, that reprinted. Another good card is getting reprinted in the silver set. Coming in number five is Madoche and Angeli. Madoche is, I don't really know how I feel about that deck, honestly. Um, like, it, it does good, right? I see it on a local level. I see people playing it. And, I, and it keeps getting support. So, obviously, someone at Konami has a Madoche fetish. However,. I never really see the deck doing as good outside of the local level. Maybe when the regional season come back up, we might see one or two top here and there, like top eight. And maybe a bunch of them will go X2. But it's definitely a card to look out for because since this card is getting reprinted, and it's a solid card as well. It's kind of like the straddle to the deck. So yeah, I think, honestly, this is a good reprint for the deck. It's a solid reprint overall. Make some quick money. Um, I believe this is number five. Number five. I can't forget. I'm just reading it down the list. Whatever number it is, it is. Um, next up, um, Mecha Phantom Beast Lion, Ho Lion. So, I'm sorry, I'm a little tired, I came home from work. This is pretty much needle fiber combos. When I was playing it, when I went to locals and watched um, my opponents go first against me when they were using their Eldritch combo decks or Mass Predator decks, they literally just. Burn up the O Lion, make tokens. It was just a bunch of mess going on. So, this getting a reprint is pretty solid as well. Um, they definitely need to do something like that. Um, Chris Ryan Hacklefax. I'm gonna call them Needle Fiber. Um, Hacklefax is a stupid name. I mean, they should have just left his name Needle Fiber, but yeah, Needle Fiber Combo Maker. Like, what What do you expect at that point? Um, let's see, I believe this is number four. I'm counting down. Um, Nutritula. So, Nutritula is getting a reprint as well. Um, that's the Fusion Trisha that came out a while ago. It's a combo card. Um, honestly, looking into that card, because I remember people pulling out on me back in the day. They don't really do much. I like think when he comes to the field, he banishes one card from his own deck, and one card from the opponent's deck, and another card at the extra deck. It's really good getting rid of like key extra deck cards. Like, who will bring it out against me? The smart players hit the Bane. Bane hurts a lot. The bad players hit Dark Law. I'm like, dude, I got another Dark Law, so whatever. But I think the new Trisha was a good reprint as well. And apparently, after doing research as well, People are saying that um, this is the first print for Europe, which is also really good. So European, European players are there. You guys have a card. Um, next up, Invocation. So, I believe this is number three. Actually, no, this is number two on my list. I'm sorry. Invocation. Really solid card. Um, invoked as an engine with the... Uh, that deck is really good. Um, apparently, it's a money card. I did not know that card was a money card. Before I researched the cards in the set, and everyone was really hyped. I asked some friends of mine, hey, man, I can't wait to Invocation get that high reprint because they've been wanting to build a deck for a while, but they couldn't because everyone who has the Invocations never wanted to get rid of them. So, yeah, it's a money card. Not gonna be high. I believe that card came ulti in the um, one of the Astro Packs, I believe. So, yeah, it ain't the highest rarity, but it's gonna be a good rarity to make you guys some moolah. And of course, the last card I'm gonna talk about um, of the top hit cards in Battle of Legends Armageddon is the Chaos Emperor Dragon Armageddon himself. Now, this card's gonna be big money. It ain't gonna be big as 10,000 Dragon or any of the Astro Rare stuff. So get that out your head. But I could see this card hitting 100 bucks easily, depending on how to print it, how many is printed in a set. I think it's gonna be short printed. Reason being, it's a prize card. 
but not only is it a prize card it's actually a really good card like the pendulum decks that was running the last format before all this um quarantine stuff happened if you had the prize card for this deck you can do like the dragon combos and it was really insane now i believe a lot of those decks got neutered um red eyes got errated things like that but it's still a solid card for what it does it has chaos emperor dragons effect of i think it sends all cards on the field and hands of the graveyard and yeah honestly just because it's a prize card it's just because it's good expect to play see players picking that card up and re-innovating that dragon link deck because dragon link is a solid deck in the meta right now it's sitting at a rogue deck because things like um Nibiru and dark road no more however a lot of people who wanted to play the deck at full power needed that car and now they have access to it so this is my list of the best cards to pick up in the battle legend armageddon tell me you guys how i did in the comment section down below once again like the video if you're new here and subscribe for more if there was a card that you guys thought should have been on the list that also wasn't on this list let your boy know man so this is rogue hero and i'm signing out man see you guys in the next video peace